The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say. Their favorite margarine is... P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Now let's see what's going on in Summerfield tonight. Dusk has long since fallen. The little wild creatures have wrapped themselves in slumber. And the voice of the turtle is no longer heard throughout the land. But this is turtle dove stuff if we ever heard it. Adeline. Yes, Throckmorton. Adeline. Now, Throckmorton, I thought you came back because you forgot something. I did. What was it? Your hat? No. My weekly kiss. <laughs> oh, you. Well, how about it? Out here on the porch, all the neighbors might hear about it. No, we won't make it a loud one. <laughs> all right. Wait till I get on the top step. There. Well? Oh, pardon me, Throckmorton, the telephone. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'd better answer it. Don't go away now. Don't worry, I won't. I no. love life. No. I... No. <laughs> Goodbye. Wrong number, Throckmorton. Oh? Some man. Man? Wanted to know if I'd advertised a set of drums for sale. Drums? <laughs> well. well uh, pucker up. Well. Adeline. <laughs> I declare that telephone. Excuse me again, Throckmorton. Don't you go away now, you hear? <laughs> Second fiddle to a telephone. What about all these calls at this hour of the night? Oh, no, no, you didn't disturb me a bit. I wasn't doing anything important. Oh, nothing important. Oh, it's sweet of you to think of me like that. All right. I'll meet you tomorrow night at 8 o'clock at the Summerfield Hotel Grill. What is this? Goodbye. What's going on here? Now then... Where were we? Don't tell me that was another set of drums, Adeline. What? Nothing. Uh, Adeline, how'd you like to go to the movies with me tomorrow night? Well, I'd like to, uh -huh. but... Uh-huh. Good night. Good morning. What's the matter with you? Nothing, nothing. Just happen to know you're going to the Summerfield Grill tomorrow night with somebody else. Oh, Throckmorton, what a jealous Yankee. Yeah, I'm not jealous. That was only one of my lady friends. Lady friends? Yes. We're having a meeting of the Green Thumb Flower and Garden Club. Uh-huh. First it was a set of drums. Now it's a flower and garden club with green thumbs. <laughs> I never heard of it. Oh, you wonderful man, you. Oh, I really believe you care for little Adeline. Well, I was about to ask you to go steady, but good night. Oh, now, Throckmorton, haven't you forgotten something? Well, no. Just save it for your big date tomorrow night, the guy with the green thumbs. Good night. <laughs> Thumb Club. I couldn't find it in the telephone directory. Oh, uh, good morning, Mrs. Yeagley. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> I see you're planting something there. Uh, I suppose you're a member of the Green Thumb Flower and Garden Club. I've never heard of it. You haven't? I'm just burying a bone. What? My little Pekingese just loves to dig them up. Don't you, Rollo? <laughs> <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Bessie? You've been looking so sick all day. You didn't even go out to lunch. 
Don't you think you should go home? No, Bessie. Uh, Bessie, have you ever heard of the Green Thumb Flower and Garden Club? No, sir. Mr. Gildersleeve, now you look worse. I feel worse. I think I'll go home. <laughs> I'll just peek out of the window again, and uh, uh, there she comes. <laughs> she looks gorgeous, and she's wearing her big picture hat. Well, that'll get in trouble. It did me. I shouldn't say this, but by George, she doesn't look like she's going to any club meeting. She's getting into a taxi. <laughs> she does it so nicely. Uncle Mark, what are you doing staring out of the window? Uh, oh, just watching the sunset, Marjorie. Uncle Mort, the sun sets on the other side of the house. It does? Oh, yes. Where's she going? Going who? Miss Fairchild. Oh. She's going to a meeting of the Green Thumb Club, Marjorie. Yes, indeed. I was just seeing her off. From behind the drapes? <laughs> and what's the Green Thumb Club, for heaven's sake? It's a ladies' flower and garden club, I imagine. Haven't you heard of it either? No. Oh. Uh. Uh, uh. Poor Unky. You're jealous, aren't you? Jealous? Why should I be jealous? Now, Unky, brooding won't do any good. Why don't you read a good book? Well, as long as I'm staying home, I may as well improve my mind. Boy, what a dinner. Thanks for your steak, Unk. Sorry you didn't feel like coming to the table. I can see that, Leroy. Wipe your chin. Aren't you going out tonight? No, Leroy. You're not? Do you hear that more junk isn't going out tonight? I know. What's the matter, Uncle? She stand you up? All right, Leroy. Marjorie, where's that book? What kind do you want? Well, make it a big book, one I can lose myself in. Are you kidding? Leroy. <laughs> I'm in a bad mood. I haven't eaten. How about these fairy tales you used to read to us kids? You always enjoyed them more than we did. I heard enough fairy tales last night. Oh, here's your favorite, The Sleeping Beauty. All right, bring it. I don't feel like finishing it. At least I know how it turns out. Which one did you say? Bring me the Sleeping Beauty. You call me, Miss Gilkey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bertie. Oh, I thought I heard you call me. You staying home tonight? Yes, Bertie. Well, you hear that, Leroy? Your uncle's staying home tonight. Oh, my goodness. Here's your book, Uncle Mort. Miss Marjorie, you hear that? Your uncle's staying home tonight. First he didn't eat, and I staying home now, tonight. Now, Bertie, let's not make a big thing out of this. Is there anything wrong with me staying at home? Oh, goodness, no, Miss Gilsey. I think it's nice that you're staying home tonight. That's fine, and that settles it, eh? I bet Leroy thinks it's nice you're staying home tonight, too, don't you, Leroy? Sure. Yes, sir. I bet Miss Marjorie thinks it's nice you're staying home tonight, too, don't you, Miss Marjorie? All right, Bertie. You see, Mr. Gilsley, we all think it's nice if you stay at home tonight. Oh, where's my hat? It's your move, Gilly. Don't rush me, Judge. I'm thinking. You're not thinking much about your checkers. Where I sit, it looks like I'm going to win three straight. That's what you think. There. Are you sure you want to move that way, Gildy? I know what I'm doing, Judge. All right. Uh, crown me, Gildy. <laughs> I'll crown you, you old goat. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am, Gildy. This is an unexpected pleasure. You're coming over to visit me this evening? Uh, this year. I don't feel like playing anymore, Judge. Let's quit. Want to try my seat? It seems to be the lucky one. No thanks, Judge. Very well. You're my guest. Care for cigar? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Havana's. Fine cigar, Judge. Thank you. If you'll pardon me, I think I'll slip into my smoking jacket before I light up. <laughs> Judge, when are you going to get a new smoking jacket? Even cigar smoke doesn't keep the moths out of that one anymore. I suppose it's silly, Gilda, but this jacket has a sentimental association for me. It's sort of my robe of bachelorhood. It is? It's more like an old quilt to me. I wouldn't think of parting with Henrietta. Henrietta? The one love of my life, Henrietta.
A smoking jacket? No, no, no. The girl who gave it to me. Oh. <laughs> Henrietta Crowley. I understand it's Smith now. Oh. I've never told anyone this, Gildy. But Henrietta's and mine was a beautiful love, springing from chance meeting, growing into an all-consuming passion, and ending with a broken heart. Look, Judge, if you'd rather not talk about it... No, 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 Gildy, I want to talk about it. With you, old friend. But... I even saved that money to get married. Hard-earned money as a law clerk. Yes, yes. But then I grew to suspect that she was seeing somebody else. You did? And driven by jealousy... I, uh, but I can see I'm boring you. Oh, no. Go ahead, Horace. Was she seeing somebody else? Well, one Sunday she said she was going out to a balloon ascension with some members of the ladies' aid. Did she judge? Gilda, it will pain you to know, as it did me, that there wasn't a balloon within three states. <laughs> What's the matter, Gilda? Judge, you like to grow things. Have you ever heard of the Green Thumb Flower and Garden Club? What is it, a gag? Oh, well, it's a gag no longer. I'll see you later, Judge. Gildy, where are you going? To the balloon ascension. Um, I mean the Summerfield Hotel Grill. No woman's going to make a balloon uh, fool out of me. <laughs> I wonder who her new boyfriend is. Well, uh, whoever it is, I'll just barge in and embarrass both of them. Uh, sorry, you can't go in here. What? The dining room is reserved this evening. Oh, he's a big shot, eh? He's reserving the whole dining room. Out of the way, waiter, I'm going in. But, mister, it's reserved. I but... don't care if it's reserved. <laughs> oh, it is women. I better get out of here. Why, Oh, uh, hello, Adeline. What are you doing down here? Me? Well, I was on my way. Is that you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, hello, Mrs. Pettibone. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, aren't we flattered, girl? A city official coming to the first meeting of our new club, our only man. <laughs> and isn't it appropriate that he happens to be our water commissioner? Because every little flower and every little vegetable needs water. <laughs> oh, brother. Throckmorton, you're a regular hero. Yes, <laughs> you Yeah, oh, thank you. Well, better be going. Unfortunately, Mr. Gildersleeve, you've arrived too late to make your donation to our club. Donation? Um, well, um, uh, it seems all I have is some small change. Small change? Yeah, I don't have my checkbook with me. <laughs> oh, well, don't be embarrassed, Mr. Gilder, please. I'll be very happy to call personally at your office for your contribution first thing in the morning. I'll bet you will. What? Um, I say, Bessie, my secretary, will have it ready for you. Oh, splendid. So nice of you to drop in. Good night. Good night. I'm back, Bessie. Let's look alive. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, while you were out, Mrs. Pettibone was in. You missed her. Huh? You see, Bessie, there's nothing like going out for a mid-morning cup of coffee. <laughs> I gave her your contribution, like you said. Oh, uh, good. I hope that satisfied her. It certainly should. I know it's none of my business, Mr. Gildersleeve, but weren't you a little over-generous, giving her your whole week's salary check? My whole week? What's this, Bessie? I left five dollars for Mrs. Pettibone. You did? Then the funniest thing happened. I gave Mrs. Pettibone your check. What? Bessie, you were supposed to deposit my check in the bank, as always. That's why I endorsed it. But you said your donation was on the desk, Mr. Gildersleeve, and I didn't see any five dollars. Ye gods, Bessie. How incompetent can you be? I distinctly remember taking the bill out of my wallet just like this. No, it's still there. <laughs> You want me to deposit the five dollars in the bank, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, Bessie. You know how I get my money back. We'll be back with the great Gildersleeve's problem in just a minute. You know, I saw Bertie doing her shopping the other day. She was being pretty firm with the man behind the counter, and I heard her say, I want parquet, Marjorie. Make sure you give me parquet now. I walked over and said, That's a mighty good choice, Bertie. Parquet is the margarine of craft quality, you know. I know that. 
That's why I wanted to be sure. Delicious parquet is a favorite spread for America's bread. It's a favorite at the Gildersleeves, I know that. Yes, ma'am, millions of women insist on parquet margarine as a topping for rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles, as well as bread. I insisted because I wanted to make sure. Nourishing parquet is made from choice products of American farms, and each appetizing pound is fortified with 15,000 units of important vitamin A. Parquet is economical, too. A real money saver. That's why I was making sure. Why don't you make sure, friends? Make sure you get Parquet Margarine. Try Parquet once, and you'll join the millions of women all over America who serve Parquet Margarine because it tastes so good. That's Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, made by Kraft. Now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. The water commissioner usually has his secretary place his telephone calls, but this one is too urgent. I hope I don't have to get tough with Mrs. Pettibone, but I have to get my money back. Hello? Uh, Mrs. Pettibone, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you generous man, you. <laughs> I got your check for $80.67, and you'll be happy to know it's the largest our club has received. Mm. We're thrilled, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, that's what I want to talk to you about, Mrs. Pettibone. That's a lot of money. Oh, I know, Mr. Gildersleeve. And don't worry, you'll be given due credit. Credit? At the very top of our list of sponsors. That is, if you don't mind a little publicity. But that's not what I want. Oh, you're too modest, Mr. Gildersleeve. And oh, so generous. But... And our only man contributor. Why, we ladies think of you as a fellow member. Oh, but Mrs. Pettibone... We're just thrilled, Mr. Gildersleeve. Goodbye. Goodbye, but... Why, Throckmorton. Adeline, who's treasurer of your flower and garden club? Oh, hasn't Mrs. Pettibone picked up your contribution yet? I'll say she picked it up in a large sack. Who's your treasurer? Well, we don't elect offices until tomorrow night, Throckmorton. You don't? Adeline, my secretary gave her my paycheck. Oh, and now you feel you should give a little more? No! That was $80.67. Gracious, do you make that much, you great big breadwinner, you? Come in. <laughs> Adeline, you've got to help me. You got me into this thing. Mercy, what did I do? You made me jealous, didn't you? How did I know that flower club wasn't a man? <laughs> it's not funny. How do I get my money back? Well, that's no problem, silly. Just ask Mrs. Pettibone for it. No problem? You don't know that old walkie-talkie. No wonder Dr. Pettibone wears cotton in his ears. Well, then I guess you'll just have to wait and take it up with a new treasure tomorrow night. Mm, I hate to go back there again, but by George, I'll do it. Those women aren't going to roll me for a week's pay. More coffee while you read the paper, Miss Marjorie? Thank you, Bertie. Uh, me too, Bertie. Yes, sir, Mr. Gilsey. You won't forget to leave the grocery money, will you? Uh, I'll have it for you tomorrow. Tomorrow? Uh, my checking account's a little low, and I don't want to go into our savings again. I thought yesterday was payday. It was, Bertie, but my check is temporarily tied up. Yesterday was payday, so today should be grocery day. That's the way it's always been. I know, Bertie. Payday, grocery day. That's the way it's always been. Gee, gods. <laughs> You mean you don't have my allowance, Unky? You heard me, my dear. Not till tomorrow morning. But, Unky, I... I said tomorrow morning, and I don't want to hear any more about money. Hi, Unk. Beautiful morning. How about my allowance? Oh, Leroy, I said no more talk about money. What? Pass the toast, Marge. You can reach it, Leroy. Okay. You're kidding about money, huh, Unk? No, I'm not. Well, what about my allowance? You get it tomorrow. But, gosh, yesterday was payday, wasn't it? And after payday... I know. Allowance day. Let me out of here. <laughs> Oh, hello, Floyd. Well, if it ain't the ladies, Luther Burbank. <laughs> now, Floyd. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? <laughs> All right, Floyd, stop it. I was only kidding, Commit. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a shave. Okay. You know, I don't blame you. I wouldn't like having my name bandaged about on the woman's page either. 
Woman's page. Yes, morning's paper. Oh, my goodness. How'd you get messed up with all them femmes anyway, Commish? You taking this nature boy seriously? Uh, <laughs> no, Floyd. The mayor made you do it, huh? Official duty? Floyd, I'd rather not talk about it. Okay. You know, Lovey got interested in flowers once. Grew a sweet potato vine in the house. Let's drop the subject, please, Floyd. Okay. You should have seen it, Commish. Grew like Jack's beanstalk. Tentacles like an octopus. Ooh. When it started growing up the banister toward my bedroom, I got uneasy and poisoned it. <laughs> I guess you'll be going in for fancy flowers, huh, Commish? Goldilocks and stuff. Floyd, get this straight. I'm not affiliated with a flower and garden club. Just flitting amongst them, huh? Oh, you butterfly. I only gave him a donation. I'll say you did. It says right here on the woman's page. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, City Water Commissioner, delighted the ladies by generously donating... Oh, Floyd, eight... give me that clipping. Hello, P.V. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this fine evening? Give me a Coke, Peavy. Very well. One Coke coming up. While you're at it, you may as well draw two. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gillespie, but I don't think I'd care for one. They're both for me, Peavy. I need them. Got a tough night ahead. That's so? Then you're not joining the ladies at the flower club again this evening? That's exactly where I'm going. I suppose you've been reading the newspaper, too. Oh, no, Mr. Gillespie. I'm not in the habit of reading the women's page. Mrs. Peavy read it to me. But I think that was a nice thing you did for the club. Now, wait a minute. And so does Mrs. Peavy. Peavy, for your information... In fact, she'd like to have you come over and spend an evening with us soon. What? Perhaps you can make it the evening our night blooming serious comes out. <laughs> Peavy, I'm not interested in night blooming seriousness. You're not? Well, that's strange to hear from a man who enjoys flower and garden meeting. I don't enjoy him, Peavy, believe me. There's nothing worse than a man getting tangled up with a room full of women. Well, I wouldn't enjoy that. <laughs> but if you don't like flowers... I but... love flowers, but I gave them too large a contribution. I'm going to get it back from the treasurer and never go near the place again. Mrs. Peavy, be sorry to hear that. Yes, sir. She was putting your clipping right up next to the picture of General MacArthur over her sewing machine. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. But if you're going to renege... What? Indian giver. Now, Peavy... All those women thought a lot of you. But... And so did Mrs. Peavy. But, Peavy, I can't afford to give them a whole week's salary. I'm going over there right now, too. Hey, Mr. Gildersleeve, haven't you forgotten something? No, I'll pay you for the Cokes when I get my money back. <laughs> be about time for the meeting to break up. I'll get a hold of that treasure. Uh, sorry, you can't go in there. What? The dining room is reserved this evening for the ladies. Mm. Oh, it's you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Go right in. Yes, yes. That waiter again. Oh. More women here than before. I'll sneak in the back. That's all over. And so that takes care of the office of treasurer. Huh? wonder who they elected. After the meeting, I shall turn our funds over to her, gladly, because I dislike handling money, unless it's my husband's. <laughs> what an old biddy. See, what a hen house. Peavy ought to come to one of these things. He'd find out. Hello, Throckmorton. Oh, uh, hello, Adeline. Throckmorton, I have the most marvelous surprise for you. Shh, I'm hiding. I've been elected treasurer. You, treasurer? I was the only candidate. But I wanted to help you out. Well, great. Now, right after the meeting. Uh, yeah. Now we come to the election of our president. A selection which should be given careful consideration. Well, hurry up so I can get my money and get out of here. As huh? I said before, I prefer to remain chairman of the board and do not choose to run. But we should elect someone to work hand in hand with me. Can't stand here much longer. I'll meet you outside, Adeline. Oh, I see that Mr. Gildersleeve is with us again this evening. Oh, oh. Shouldn't have stuck my head up. I should like to remind one and all 
all that in addition to being a generous contributor, he is the only man to attend both our meetings. <laughs> now, doesn't it seem appropriate then, since every little flower and every little vegetable needs its water, that we should elect our devoted water commissioner president of our flower and garden club? Uh, I so move. Oh, how do I get into these things? The great Gildersleeve will be trying to get that check back again in just a minute. You'll like it. Your whole family will like delicious parquet, the margarine of craft quality. You'll like the fresh, sweet goodness parquet adds to bread, rolls, pancakes, and waffles. You'll like the fact that it's such a wholesome, nourishing food. Parquet is made from only the choice products of American farms, and each delicious pound contains 15,000 units of vitamin A. And best of all, you'll like what parquet does for your budget. It's a fact. Parquet is a money saver. It's your best buy for bread and budget. So buy the bright yellow package with the big blue letters, P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Mr. Steve, Mrs. Peavy tells me you were elected president of the Flower and Garden Club last night. Yes, Peavy. Mm. What's your first official act going to be, Mr. President? I've already acted, Peavy. I got my check back, then I resigned. Aren't you? Yeah. I got a statement from my doctor saying I'm allergic to goldenrod and six other flowers. <laughs> yeah. But they were happy, Peavy. I raised my $5 contribution to... Uh... Uh... Hey, you! Uh, how much, Mr. Gillespie? Uh, Peavy, what's that on your counter? Uh, goldenrod. Mrs. Peavy brought them down. Oh, for... Uh, he, uh, good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry, Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by John Elliott and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. Yes, yes. This is John Wall saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, hear Al Jolson on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these NBC stations. Yeah. Don't miss it. For exact time, see your local paper. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Ladies, listen. An honest dollar and a quarter value for only 35 cents. That's our amazing offer. You can get a stainless steel cake and pie knife, an honest dollar and a quarter value, a knife with a sparkling six-inch serrated blade, and a gleaming handle of Agatron for only 35 cents, and one top label from a package of Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food. It's the perfect cake and pie knife for your table. It's perfect for kitchen use. Just send 35 cents and one Phoenix Pabstep package top label to the Phoenix Pabstep Company, Box 1723, Chicago 77, Illinois. Got that? 35 cents and one Pabstep label to the Phoenix, P-H-E-N-I-X, Pabstep Company, Box 1723, Chicago 77.
This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.